What's up guys, this is the Honest Outlaw here and we've got another first shots for you today. This is the Canik SC. So the Canik TP9 Elite SC, I should say. So the uh, enhanced version of the subcompact, which is one of the better deals for the money that you can get. And again, we're doing that a lot on the channel. This uh, gun comes with uh, tritium night sights, which is pretty cool. Optics mounting system. It's got some serrations here for you to put your thumb, which I like. AMB uh, slide stop and a really good trigger, an extended magazine release, pretty good texture, comes with back straps and a light rail, uh, which I mounted a uh, Olight Valkyrie to, and it seems to work. Another good thing about this gun is it has mag compatibility with the larger Canix as well, and we're gonna be testing some of these magazines with it also, so it could kind of flex in between a carry and home defense roll. Now these guns, uh, before the uh, toilet paper apocalypse, you could find them for under $300. I'm not exactly sure what they're going for now. I purchased mine for under $300 and I got it at Mr. Guns in Waterloo, Iowa. So just a regular old gun shop. It's got a loaded chamber indicator, and lots of other features. That's what the Canik, does, that's what the Canik uh, model of handguns really does, is it gives you a lot of features that are on premium handguns for a lot less money. Uh, one of the reasons they're able to do that is because they're not an American product. They're a, a product of Turkey, which a lot of people don't like. Understandable. Uh, they also come with front slide serrations and a uh, graphite colored Cerakote on the slide, making it look pretty neat with the uh, uh, trigger safety here being red. It's got a really cool color scheme, which I've always enjoyed, which I is why I also own the Canik TP9 SFX Elite, it's the five inch. And uh, that's the magazines I'll also be using with this gun. That's kind of the Canik in a nutshell. And what we do with our first, shot of, first shots videos is we uh, take them out and we shoot a couple hundred rounds through them and then give you my first impressions before a month or so later giving you my final thousand round review. It's kind of give you guys an update and a first look at this gun. If you guys are really thinking about purchasing it, it might sway you one way or the other, especially during the, the current climate in the United States when people are scrambling for affordable yet a reliable guns. All right, so as you can see right here, we've got a couple different mags. Uh, the SC, the subcompact, comes with a 12 round magazine with a little finger extension, which I really like. And it comes with a 15 round magazine also, which I really like. And the other thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be running the 18 round mags just to help me with the loading process, but also to confirm that they work. So let's say you wanted to run this as a carry gun, which is it's a pretty good size for in my opinion. It's kind of Glock 26 size. Honestly, maybe a little bit bigger than a Glock 26, it looks like to me. But you could run it with the small mag, and then when you get home, you could ditch the small mag, and you could throw on a weapon light of, your, of whatever type you want, like this Olight Valkyrie here. Now it fits on securely, but you can't pull it off because it doesn't have a long enough rail, so we'll see if it comes off in the actual uh, shooting. But I do have other lights like the uh, uh, Enforce APLC and stuff like that that do fit on here. I'm just kind of showing you as an example. But you could throw a weapon light on here and then put in an 18 round mag and that would be a pretty formidable home defense weapon. So you have a really uh, versatile platform here in my personal opinion. So we'll throw a few shots through it here real quick and see how it operates. Now I'm using federal training ammunition because that's what was available to me at the time. I've got a bunch of ammunition coming, but it just isn't showing up because of the toilet paper apocalypse. And uh, so we're gonna use some ammos and hopefully they work. Now one thing about uh, Turkish guns overall, but especially Canics, is they like higher pressured 124 NATO spec ammo. And sometimes 115 grain ammunition, uh, stuff that we shoot on the channel because that's what most people in the United States buy, doesn't always work in these guns. And you can buy aftermarket recoil springs, but in my personal opinion, if they're gonna add a holster and all kinds of other stuff with the guns to begin with, they should just add that recoil spring in as well. But mm, that's just my opinion. Well, it seems to work, and this is a really nice shooting gun uh, for being a subcompact. I'm immediately impressed with this. We're at about 20 yards here, and I can probably pick those six inch plates off, no problem. Yep. So 
Sorry, I like playing the spin game. It's now a nice way to get a kind of a hillbilly off. moving target, you know what I mean? <laughs> but these sights are really nice. The Canic models themselves have really good triggers. So, uh, it's easy to get accuracy. Ooh, I like this. And no reliability problems already. Like the uh, the five inch, we had one uh, issue in the first 400 rounds. This one, I really don't feel like it's going to have any problems. Like the ejection uh, pattern is pretty solid, and the uh, recoil impulse is stout enough, even with that ammunition, because of the smaller slide. That I don't think we're going to have any problems with 115, but we'll see. All right, so now we got the carry magazine in it, and we'll get up a little closer here, and we'll just do some concealed carry distance. We're about 10 yards away. Runs pretty good. Oh, the slide didn't lock back there. Really shootable for a subcompact gun. It's a little bit larger than the average subcompact gun too, especially if you're gonna compare this to something like the P365 from SIG, which is kind of the gold standard now of carry guns because it's similar capacity, but a much smaller gun. But for me being a little bit larger dude, uh, this fits me very well and it shoots really nice. All right, so now we're back here about 30 yards. We'll just see what we can hit. Oh, we can hit the hostage plate once. So far, seems really accurate. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. You're out. What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three hundred dollars is not so bad, huh? No, absolutely not. I mean, it's not as good as the Athena. Well, yeah. Nothing will ever be. It's like with the optic, that's like six grand. <laughs> this is definitely a really good <laughs> yeah. option for. You do the math. How much you can literally costs. get twenty of those for one Athena. Yeah. Right. So we got the Canic TP9 SC out here at fifty yards, and we're gonna shoot our last ten rounds, and hopefully we'll be able to hit something. This thing shoots really flat for being a subcompact. All right, so overall, so far at least, I think the Canic TP9 SEC Elite, the subcompact elite version, is certainly worth the money. Uh, the only real downside to these has been in the past a little bit of reliability problems. Some of the other reviewers that I've seen have had issues with this. I've had a lot of people message me about their issues, and uh, I've had issues with mainly the larger series of the uh, Canic TP9 and the subcompact, and uh, most of that's due to that recoil spring, but I had one of the originals that came out four years ago or something, and I continuously had re reliability issues with that. Some of that's gonna be quality control as well, because one of the things that goes out of the window with cheaper guns is quality control, so you can get 90 of them that work great, and you get 10 of them that don't. 
but uh, overall, at least, this seems to be in the 90 percentile because it seems to work great with all the ammo that I tried. I used seller and billet and I used federal training ammo and it worked with no problems whatsoever. So 115 seems to be pretty good to go, at least with the smaller Canic series. For the money, for the features, and for the accuracy of this gun, so far I'm definitely gonna have to recommend this guy. Uh, if you wanna become a Patreon supporter, we do all kinds of cool stuff. All you gotta do is go in the link in the description. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please support your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.